Uh, this presentation is about the Felix86 emulator project and how we emulate x86 on RISC uh, V. I think uh, one important way in getting end users to use RISC V for their everything PC is making sure that their x86 applications and games can run just fine on RISC V. This is where this project comes in where it is an x86 and x86-64 user space emulator for 64-bit RISC-V Linux. It features a just-in-time recompiler and supports most of the instruction set up to SSC 4.2. The SIMD instructions use R uh, RVV 1.0. Uh, and it works. It can emulate a variety of games and applications like the Steam Launcher for Steam DRM games or Wine Proton for Windows games. So for this talk, I wanted to go over the low-level details of uh, translation, how we translate uh, to instruction sets that differ so much. And afterwards, we're going to see also some general uh, issues that arise in this process. So we're going to start with how we emulate scalar instructions. Now, RISC-V has 31 general purpose registers. x86 has 16, so uh, they are statically allocated, which has some benefits. Uh, now, most x86 instructions that use 64-bit operands generally translate one-to-one, -one, uh, plus any flags that you need to calculate. Uh, flag calculations, when you have 64-bit operands, are one, two, three instructions. If you don't have 64-bit operands and you have 16 or 32, then you may need to either zero extend or preserve the upper bits. So you might need more instructions for those. And the same goes for the actual instruction itself. As I said, flags do need to be calculated in software in risk five, but most of the time, the flags are actually unused, so we can get away without calculating them. In the left example, you can see some x86 code, and you have an add instruction followed by an add with carry. Now, the add will calculate all six flags that we care about, and so will the add with carry overriding them, but in the process, it will use the carry flag. So in the generated RISC-V code, we have the add and then a set less than to calculate the carry, and then the add with carry. Now, after the add with carry, we calculate all the flags because we don't know uh, where the execution flow will end up. Uh, in the case that we did know where the jump will land, uh, we do check um, the block, block or blocks that will land, and if the flags are over in there as well, we don't emit them here either. We also make uh, extensive use of the bit manipulation extensions. So uh, eight and 16-bit uh, instructions that use eight and 16-bit operands uh, te tend to need extra work to preserve the top bits. Now, you can do that by masking out each operand and then doing the operation and then inserting it. Um, but for example, for add, what we can do to uh, reduce the instruction count is shift the source operand up and rotate the other operand and do the operation and then rotate it back. And this way, you don't need to extract or insert the bits. So this is one way we use bit manipulation. Another is uh, you have these, uh, what's called effective addresses in x86. Uh, and uh, for those, we can use the shift with add instruction. And finally, also uh, bit manipulation uh, instructions in x86 also translate pretty nicely. So. Now let's get into the SIMD instructions. And uh, again, it is the case that uh, a, lot of a lot of instructions map one-to-one. -one. Um, now, in RISC-V, you need the vsetively instruction to change the vector state, how many elements you have and their width. But if uh, the vector state is the same within a block and it remains the same, we don't need to omit it for every instruction. So uh, excluding any visitable instructions that may or may not arise, they, um, a lot of instructions translate pretty nicely. So these are your subs, with add sub, mold div, square root with uh, scalar and packed operands, your sign extends, 
uh, your uh, max, min, logical operation, shifts, and some others that we'll see later. Now, some others need uh, a couple of instructions, so your blends will work with a vMerge, but also need some to create the mask, and extracts can uh, work with slides. Uh, but other instructions that we'll see right now uh, may need more work. So here's one example of uh, an x86 instruction which basically interleaves elements, 8-bit uh, elements into 16-bit uh, elements. Uh, now this in uh, RISC-V can be done with widening the ads and then sh uh, shifting it and oring them together. Or it can be done with a widening shift to save one instruction if you have that. Uh, but there's also this uh, ZV zip extension that is um, in fast track that should be able to do this in one instruction. So looking forward to that. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about uh, Suffles. In x86, Suffles can pick elements from two different registers. Um, so in the worst case, assuming we use uh, register element grouping of, uh, or sorry, register grouping of one, uh, we will need to use uh, two VR gather instructions. Um, however, there is common patterns uh, that emerge, such as uh, shuffling from the same register, in which case you can uh, get away with one uh, VR gather instruction. And if it happens to be that the uh, immediate byte is in a, a specific way, uh, you can even use the immediate VR gather um, <coughs> to save on creating the index register. Uh, if there is a memory operand in the shuffle, uh, we can also use index loads to uh, basically combine the, the VR gather and the uh, load from memory into one. Um, I think I have some bonus slides before I show you something. Oh, maybe not. Okay. All right, let's watch a demo then um, of some games running on uh, RISC-V hardware uh, using Felix86. The audio doesn't work, but it's okay. The Aperture Science Extended Relaxation Center must be revived periodically for a mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. All right, so these are all running on uh, Milky Jupiter uh, using uh, Felix86. Uh, finally, I would like to talk about some general issues that we face in the translation process. Uh, x86 has a strong memory model. Now, if uh, in RISC-V we have RVTSO, uh, that is not a problem uh, generally, but in, uh, if we don't have, which is, which is the default, uh, we need to use fences. Now, it turns out that a lot of programs and games can operate fine uh, without inserting fences on every single memory load and store. So by default, we don't insert fences and uh, programs work, but uh, if you need to insert them, uh, an option is there. Um, also, in uh, later MSVC compiler versions, there is this uh, feature called Volatile Metadata that tells you exactly where you need to insert the fences. Uh, so that you don't insert them everywhere and uh, ruin your performance. Uh, another issue is that x86 allows for unaligned atomics within a cache line. Um, now, we could have the misaligned atomicity granule PMA, and if we did, uh, we could achieve the same, uh, but we would also probably need the, uh, the Zapha extension to have Biden half-word atomics. Um, now, if we don't have that, there is the uh, ability to emulate 16 and 32 bit uh, misaligned atomics with LR and SC sequences, but that is only within an 8 byte granule, so it's not a cache line, uh, so it may cause problems. Uh, misaligned atomics are rare, especially in modern programs, but uh, old programs and games do use them uh, sometimes, so. Uh, there is also this instruction in x86 that is called compare exchange 16b. 
And uh, in order to correctly emulate that without ruining performance, uh, in my opinion, is uh, to use the Amocast uh, instruction from the Zocast extension. Uh, what we currently do is a best effort uh, way where we have a lock on every compare exchange 16B. This isn't perfect because uh, it's not atomic uh, with uh, regards to other um, memory accesses, but it is atomic with regards to other compare exchanges. So it is what we do right now. And uh, finally, uh, analyzing scalar access. Uh, if there's no hardware support and it has to go through software, uh, we need that as well. Okay, so that was it for me. Uh, if you need more information, you can check out our repository. Uh, you can also check felix86.com. There is monthly blog posts. They uh, get pretty technical, so you might find it interesting. Uh, if you like this project, uh, please consider giving a star on GitHub uh, because it helps with discovery. Not a lot of people know us yet. And thanks for attending. That is it. Great work you're doing. Um, uh, you mentioned OpenGL, but uh, I wonder what the progress is on like getting uh, Vulkan-compatible games to run on the uh, RISC-V board, because I heard Vulkan is a much lower level API that uh, gives you a lot more control over the hardware and can like squeeze out a lot more performance. Um, so if you have a GPU connected, Vulkan games will just work because it will use the x86 driver and it will work. Uh, if you don't have a GPU connected and you only have the iGPU, um, currently there's no x86 uh, Vulkan driver, but we do try to um, forward Vulkan and OpenGL calls to the host to try to use the host driver. Uh, this isn't perfect yet, so not everything will work, but uh, some things will work, especially with OpenGL. All right. Can I know about the number of the translation overhead at the runtime? The number of, sorry? Translation overhead. Translation overhead. Uh, currently, the translation overhead, uh, in my opinion, is uh, very low. And this is because we don't have an IR. We basically decode an instruction and immediately uh, recompile it, basically. And after we recompile a block, we cache it, and it gets reused. Uh, in fact, we, uh, a contributor, made a preliminary uh, implementation of uh, a dish cache so that when you recompile a block, uh, further recompilations of the same block on further runs uh, will load it from disk, will load the final RISC-5 RISC and 7 from uh, disk. And it turned out that uh, for, at least for that preliminary uh, support, uh, loading it from disk was actually slower than uh, recompiling the block. It would actually cause uh, bigger load times on some things that we tested. Do you have to deal with uh, self-modifying code or the game itself is trying to jet some code? Do you have to deal with that? Uh, yes. Um, some of the games that I showed, like Fez and Celeste, use Mono, which uh, recompiles uh, uh, IL to host code. So yes, we do have to deal with uh, self-modifying code. Also, games that use uh, Lua Jit, for example, Bellatro. Um, the way we deal with it is whenever you recompile a block, it basically pr read protects the page. Uh, since x86 doesn't have any flush instructions that uh, uh, tell you exactly when self-modifying code has uh, stopped. And after it uh, makes uh, the page read only, the single handler will uh, go ahead and uh, invalidate the blocks in that page.